what was it about Chile that you fell in love with? There, there was there was lots of interesting things going on then. Um, I grew up in in Canada and. Um, Everything was very made, everything was very finished, it was very developed. And Chile obviously was in transition then, and there were many things to do. It was kind of, let me say, a frontier. But when my father visits, he says, this is, used to say, it was like the 60s in Canada. And I think there is kind of a boom time that comes. Yeah. Does that, does that have an impact on the wine, do you think? I think it, is, I think it has a real impact. This gets... Um, and it's how one approaches things in life, but I, I saw Chile as being culturally different than Canada in that they don't have the same belief in, um, you see in the, you see here, the, the dark horse, the, the, the comeback, or the, you know, the David versus Goliath, the, yeah. the, easiest way, the easiest way to say it. And I think, I think mo most, most in Chile never understood the opportunity that that represented. In the last World Cup, Chile was called the Dark Horse, and they still didn't get it, even though that would have been a brilliant image for the entire nation. Yeah. But it's always, obviously, um, a lot of big firms in the trade in Chile. Um, they, they call it an industry, which I've never been able to understand. In the end, to me, there was always a, there was always in, not just in wine, but in meetings, there was always an opportunity for someone smaller. To, 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 to look for the niche, to look for the small, never thinking this has to grow big. We never thought we were going to conquer the uh, heart of the buyer for an English supermarket. That was never part of the plan. You are, there's a kind of a cluster of dark horses within Movi, isn't it? And it's, it's not just you, and there's so your Mo friends. Mo Movi is the movement of independent vendors, or the movimiento de viñeteros independientes. I'm glad you said it that. Sounds more Monty Python in Spanish than it does in English. Um, there was there's a good good list. There are 32 today. It's grown since when we formed. It was 12, and then it's it's gone up. Um, how do you say we bit at a time? In the beginning, it was like a, it was a buying block, so they would take it serious. If you wanted to buy a few thousand bottles or a few thousand caps, that was what we we banded together out of necessity. But today, it becomes a thing. You know, the, it's a serious writers of wine in the world want to taste the wines as a set. No, it's exciting time. But most people, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think many people in this country know that that, that Moby really exists. It used to make noise. Jance would write about it and things like that. More lately, I'm not sure it makes near enough noise. But, it, but it, is it because it doesn't really fit in what people's image of Chile is? I mean, Chile is. But a lot of people is kind of straightforward and it's brands and they all start at the you know entry level reserver grand reserver and when you don't have any of that it's just well that's what we make and it's out of a great variety you might not have heard of before i'm sure that's been and will be brilliant business for many people in the trade for years to come but those aren't the wines that i drink and it's not because i turn my nose up at them is that many of those wines are made how do you say to specs we brought to this country in special deals People are always talking about Chilean Merlot, and I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I'd know where to look for a Chilean Merlot in Chile. And it's kind of, it all, I mean, it, I had to have to think. I think most of that is made to specs and shipped outside. Whereas in Chile, what's going on today is brilliant. There's, I'm not sure there'd be a hundred small projects, but I don't think there'd be many less than that. I mean, there's, besides Movi or besides Vino, a group of Caribbean producers, there's a lot of little things going on in Itata and in Maule, the Secano Interior, we say. But people that are, some of them lean to the natural, some of them lean to more classic. There's lots of things going on. And there's other groups forming, there's people chiding at the bit to try and get DOCs from there. It's exciting times in, in wine in Chile. It's a shame more of it doesn't get out, but I'm sure we will see it soon. This is a Maule, isn't yeah. it? This is Maule, this is some sal. But if, if somebody's not studied, in, or not studied in detail Maule, how is that different from Central Valley or Cochawa and Alta Maipo? We think of Chile as being these tremendous mountains, the, the Andes, and they flow down into the ocean. But there's really, just like there is in California or Canada, there's a Cordillera de la Costa, there's the coastal range, which are far, which are mountains which are much, much older, and they were much cooler, sort of much slower to cool. 
So they are not a rock doctor, but let's just say there's more crystals because they're slower to cool. So it's granitic soils. So it's um, metamorphic rock that's managed to crack so that roots can get down into it. And it's a completely different taste profile than if you tried one of our carignans from an alluvial kind of riverbank situation, more kind of between those two mountains. Very, very different. Um, the, the name is significant. Why is it called the, pl the Plowman? Um, because these are the people who do these wines. Um, you know, it's kind of it, it makes it makes chili sound backwards for me to say that many of these people literally they drive horses in the sense that they work with horses because that is their vehicle. Some of them don't own vehicles and they wouldn't have a license to drive them if they did. And it's that's not to make it sound backwards. It's made to sound. I, I mean it in the sense that it's a fascinating way, a fascinating place to make wine because you have to think of the of the diamonds in the rough, the things there are to do. And you also have to think on a, on a more human element of this. I have boys 10 and 12 today. Wine was never interesting to them. To a young person, a bunch of people just like, hoo, 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 and you're smelling of glass, and then it's the most boring thing on earth. But in the end, if you take them to, one of, to some of these places, it, 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 it's like spending a few days at Pioneer Village. You know? I mean, it really is. And I, I, am, I am to this day inspired by people who, who, who work on, how do you say, a real day's labor, like most of us have forgotten many moons ago. They're just, they're salt of the earth, wondrous people who are good for the brew, for humanist reasons. Well, you've introduced you've introduced me to Nivaldo, who is a salt of the earth guy with a big hat and really big hands, and doesn't doesn't own a car, drives everywhere. Is some of his fruits in in this, or is this his colleagues? Or no, this is his property. This, this is, is the property. wine from his property. Read on the back. How many bottles are in the back of that? Uh, there's a three thousand three hundred and twenty-five bottles. So that's that would be about an average year from there. So this is someone who. Um, he had old Carignan that were, would have been, um, the, the vineyard would be, let's say, colonial, be very, very old. And then they came along to, in order to improve the wines, kind of the, sim the simpler country wines of Pais or Mission Vineyard, they would put a little bit of Carignan on one end. So if you had two or three acres, there'd be a third or a fourth that was planted later. Um, at different times in history. And what we've done is here and elsewhere, Plowman Farmers Program, we've made a wine out of the base of that old Carignan. This one we have grafted uh, Garnacha on a hillside that gets the first shade of the afternoon, and um, a bit of uh, Mataro, uh, French we call it. Um, and in the end, that makes the field blend up from the South Sal Vineyard. And then we today have five Carignans that have different field blends in them. And the idea is that these um, the customers just get used to these turning over. In any given year, some of them are a little more approachable, younger, and this is kind of this potpourri of what's going on in, in really two neighborhoods of Carignan. But you are looking for much more vintage variation as they change through. They, they should change each year and be different. Yeah, I like to think we're honing in. Um, it's a very, I shouldn't say screwy on TV, but um, video. But um, it's a very cockamamie way to make these things. Basically, we try and separate everything we can. A wine like this, that that would be, um, let's say, 11 barrels of wine. What we do is we try and make 11 different barrels. And they only meet just before they're bottled. So you'd have the Grenache done something, maybe some of the juice comes off the skins a little earlier, so you'd have kind of two bits of juice. Then you'd have the pressed juice. You'd have some with um, whole stems done in a bin where you get them with your feet. You'd have some of the barrels that have a bit of batonnage, and others you wouldn't. In the end, you really come, in the case of an 11 barrel wine, you can actually make a wine that the 11 barrels are different. And what you do when that happens is you can hone in on what works best there. So it's not, not, the idea isn't to get it right the second year nor take 25, but um, it's, it's like a university thesis project where they're all little experiments, and you keep the barrel true over one winter and then a second winter. To the point where you know that a little bit of batonnage in that garnacha in that in that place makes some more interesting wine. We, we, we used to geek out and put QR codes on the barrels so that the three of us, my wife and I, and now who is a wine scientist who's a um, partner with us, 
so that you 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 had to state what you thought of the wine before you knew what it was. And you knew it was sal sal, and you could pick out this would be the Carignan, this would be this would be a pair of single barrel of uh, Mataro. But in the end, it was it was a wonderful means of finding what works where much more quickly than if you start applying recipes that others are used to doing with Carignans like this from here. You're not making this to a formula, and you're not making it for, for a reason. But I mean, this is not sipping, drinking wine in a sense. This is kind of foody wine, this really. Is food wine, so. And we got some bits here. You aren't allowed to eat yet because you're hungry. What would you have with this? I would. Because um, it's different. It's it's sort of it's a bit earthy, and it's it is Chilean in a way, but it's not like anything else I've ever had from Chile. I think it is extremely Chilean. It is intrinsically quintessentially yeah. Chilean. It's just that we actually have to convince the world what Chile is. This is what Chile really, really is. is. Um, uh, Cabernet makers from the Maifo would be upset by that remark, but I, I think there's kind of a modern day, more, I'm going to say bourgeois, history, yeah. second half of the 18th century, where a lot of French riders are in, and people build chateaus to be bigger than their cousins in France. And then there's, a, to me, a, a more... Chilean history that goes back to colonial times when you have Pais and so and that and very old things and the Carignan forms a part of that kind of older profile, an older part of Chilean history and viticulture. What kind of things does Nivaldo and his family think, eat with this, this sort of one? I think one has to understand that the people there, um, they, as we were talking about them working a full day uh, honest hard labor, um, they would eat things that are for us would be heavier, they aren't as healthy, like we're all convinced we should eat lighter, healthier food. Um, but a wine like this, actually, if you eat something that's richer, it's grouse that I've had whilst I'm uh, near the game season begins, things like that just go down so much more easily, yeah. because you have a little bit of, a little bit more freshness, a little more acid, how do we poetically say, to cut the grease, to cut the fat. Yeah. But in the end, I think we all want to eat foods like that, and we just feel guilty about it, and unless we have a wine like this. It's going to achieve. Close by. These are all, all of the wines that we're having here are, are specific to a place. We make nine parcels that are anywhere from three quarters of an acre to an acre and a half. And this and the single ferments are coming from three, even four different places, and we're making a single wine out of them. That's our uh, we grow the base. To have a second range, quote unquote. Um, I, I think it's an, an, an answer to the opportunities we've been given to um, to help others who have helped us a great deal and have inspired us to do these things. And I think those are wines that sh that should be made in the places that they are. Um, these are the wines that should be made there. It's as simple as that.